science. And I am Aaron Swink. I'm an education specialist for the Division of Aquatic Resources. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what I do and what that job entails and everything as we go through. Um, originally, I'm from Texas and I grew up, you know, kind of middle of nowhere, Texas. Um, and then my family moved out here to Kauai. Um, and so I spent a lot of my life here on Kauai as well. Um, and so I kind of like grew up part in Texas and then here. And I did homeschool and uh, like a hybrid school, which I, which at the time was really weird. Um, but now it's like a lot more common where, you know, you go to like to classes like two days a week and then you have homework and stuff on the other days. Um, so that was kind of like, that was kind of weird back then, but now it seems like what a lot of people are doing. So, um, and then I ended up going back to Texas to study um, environmental science at Texas A&M. And then I moved back out here to Kauai for a while and traveled around a bit, did some different things, and then ended up going back to Texas once more to get uh, a master's degree in aquatic resources. Um, but uh, I was able to move back um, three, four years ago, um, which was awesome. And I live in Kapa'a um, and I've got a you know big family here. And um, so it's really good to be you know back around you know, back in around the Ohana and all my little cousins and nieces and nephews and everything. So, um, and then, and, and I, I've been working for the division for about, uh, this is my third year working for the division. So, okay. So I'm going to go through some of my like, like official career kind of stuff. So I've done invasive species removal and control. So you might recognize these mountains look kind of like Kauai. Yep, this is Koke. So I work for a Koke resource conservation program. They're hiring right now if you need a job, but you guys are students, so. <laughs> but it's awesome. You basically get to go places where pretty much no one else goes. So this is photo on the right. We're at the very back of the Wainiha Valley on Robinson land doing like invasive ginger control. On um, the other one is this really cool Ohia that got blown over by Aniki and just kept going. <laughs> and then um, I worked doing um, like water quality monitoring. This was in Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. So that's obviously a pretty awesome location. And it was just like so beautiful. And we were studying it, we we're doing hydrology study um, there in the park. Um, I did a lot of cave mapping and cave surveys, including getting to go international. So this was a cave in Guatemala that I was actually on the expedition that discovered this massive cave. It was so big. Like this, the photo on the right is kind of a really cool spot, but it's quite, that was like about as small as it got. <laughs> you could fly a Cessna through this plane. It was this cave. It was amazing. <laughs> Um, and then I worked for a university, um, in Texas doing aquatic science education programs. And that was something where I just kind of fell into it. They needed somebody to run these summer camps. And, and I was like, I can do that, <laughs> I think. So I started doing that. Yeah. And I, um, got to, that was so much fun. We did, you know, field trip programs, summer camp programs. I love working. I really found a passion working with kids, working with youth and in the community really was kind of like a very much a life-changing job um, and really discovered like this whole new passion. I thought I was just gonna be like a biologist and then I was like, oh, actually maybe I wanna do like science education. So that was, that was a really big thing. Um, but I, in my position, I was still working as a biologist as well. So we, uh, this was again, working for a university in Texas. So these are all, you know, different field sites in Texas for different projects. And as you can see, you know, got some, my Kauai boy here is barefoot and I'm wearing slippers in this photo right <laughs> on the right. So, um, yeah, and it was, it was awesome. I mean, in these photos, I, we were studying uh, groundwater and groundwater organisms. And there's like this whole world of living things that exist actually just right below the stream. So this is me pounding in um, this huge, or not that huge, just metal spike into the ground so we can pump water out and uh, look for tiny little animals that live in the spaces between the rocks and catalog them. So actually I'm in Mexico 
technically right there. So that's on the Rio Grande. So on the left hand side is uh, Texas and the right is Mexico, I believe. And I think I had actually crossed the main stem of the river. So we were, <laughs> we were, we were across the border there. Um, and then I, these are some of the animals that we were describing and studying like this, you know, blind salamander, which was very cute and very fun. Um, and then this is actually a tiny little animal called an amphipod, which maybe you've seen one before, maybe not, probably not. We actually have amphipods, uh, a lot of them here in Hawaii, but they're marine and they live, a lot of the ones that we see more commonly live on the limu. Um, so if you like take a you know handful of limu and like kind of shake it out, you'll see all these little like green bugs in it and stuff. So those are amphipods, but this one lives underground and believe it or not, this one is named Texano Bathanella Aaron Swinky. <laughs> Oh, cool. <laughs> they named this one after me because this was one of the ones that we discovered on that project. So lifelong goal accomplished, having a little, you know, obscure critter named after me. Yes, and it is like an axolotl. Um, so axolotls are a salamander that exhibit what's called neotinny, which is they maintain their juvenile features into adulthood. And this little salamander does as well. So those black dots right there, those are not actually its eyes. It does not have any eyes. The eyes are completely gone. Those dark spots there are a nerve cluster that's more of its nose. Um, it's, it's, I mean, they don't exactly have a nose, but if it had a nose, that's what it would have. That's its kind of olfactory cluster there. Um, and I love their little toes. They're very cute. So, and these guys eat these guys. So there's this whole food web that we were studying as part of this project. Um, and then let's see. Oh, well, my computer seems. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, but now what am I doing? So I am working uh, for the Division of Aquatic Resources. Um, so our mission is to work with the people of Hawaii to protect and conserve and manage our aquatic resources for now and future generations. So that involves a lot of diff, that's a lot of work. Uh, it's a big island, it's a big ocean, and this is our team, not a very big team. <laughs> um, so we're out in the water, we scuba dive um, and do coral reef surveys. So you can see on the right there, there's, um, this is, I believe that's Kaloa Landing or somewhere near that area. And then um, down below, us kind of it's not always the most graceful work <laughs> but this is actually how we survey for oopu our native freshwater fish is you sneak up on them and you put your face in the water and you just lay there really really still and wait for them to all come back out of their little holes and hidey places and then you just count them <laughs> so um it's a lot of fun you know we spend a lot of time out in the water a lot of time in the field um you know doing coral reef surveys, doing stream surveys, responding to all kinds of different environmental situations like, you know, a ship grounding, for example, or if we have some kind of an oil spill or problem or, you know, an invasive species that's, you know, that's something that we had several things last year responding, cleaning up invasive species before they, you know, take over. Um, working with our protected species program. So that's like the, the federally listed species. So that's monk seals and and sea turtles um, primarily, but also all of our like whales and dolphins. Um, so we get to go out and, you know, help help those guys. Seals and turtles, a lot of the work there is just, um, you know, if they have fishing line or something wrapped around them, we go try and get it off of them. Or if they're in a place where they're in danger, we'll move them. Or if they're sick um, and it's, you know, deemed that it's gonna be a good thing, we'll move, you know, we'll actually like put them on an airplane and fly them to the seal hospital on big island it's crazy <laughs> um so and then uh but i'm the, as the education and outreach coordinator oh there's the turtle there's one turtle that came back from the hospital and we got to release it back out to the wild <laughs> um but i do aquatic science education and fishing education so um, there's one of our fishing education events. We do like Ohana fishing days with different groups and schools. And then of course we have our Kokei trout program, which is, you know, everybody's, you know, big family tradition for so many people here. 
Um, and that's always, that's my favorite. That's probably like my favorite thing every year is doing the trout season. It's just so much fun. Um, seeing everybody catch all the fish and just having a good, you know, good time with Johanna and just good, good fun. And, and plus I love the trout. They're really tasty. So, and then, um, Oh, there's that photo again, but we also do, I also do aquatic science, um, investigations or work with on, like on the right. This is, um, at Malama Huleia at the Alacoco fish pond. So, you know, Peleke and those guys are restoring that fish pond. And as part of that, you know, we're working with different schools to actually do studies there. So this is, um, this is from the Anahola Kanui Kapono School, the charter school. And we were looking in this one, what were we doing? Oh, we were looking at different invertebrates that were found in different areas of the pond and like, you know, talking about like salinity and how, you know, this is like the food for the fish that eventually are gonna be raised there, right? So it's really important to understand, you know, this food chains and food webs and understand how the water quality is, you know, dictating where these organisms are found in the fish pond and where it might be better places, you know, what, what are the right kind of fish that would be, you know, eat these things. So that was, that was part of this project. So that was a lot of fun. Um, so as you can see, I've done a lot of different things and that's just all the science stuff I've done. I had a lot of other jobs too, <laughs> over, you know, over my, over my career. And um, I think the, you know, there's a lot of, I hope that at least some of that seemed a little bit fun because it is very fun to me. And so field science is scientific work that's at least, you know, partially outdoors. Like obviously you're gonna have to go back, put your numbers and put your stuff in the computer, work on software, develop software to crunch the numbers, make, you know, do stats, all that kind of stuff, right? You're gonna be modeling things, you know, you're gonna be doing a lot of office work, computer work, but you're at least, you know, primarily as you're out in the field, you're trying to study the natural world, right? You're trying to understand the natural world. And it's a little bit different than say, you know, physics or, you know, which is trying to understand the natural world. But a lot of times that's more done through the use of laboratory equipment and, you know, big particle colliders and stuff like that. So it's just a little different, right? Um, so examples of some of these different jobs, like aquatic biologists. Oh, let's see, let's, let's chat. Yes, lots of fun, very diverse, very much. Um, so aquatic biologists, that's me. So it could be freshwater or um, marine, bio marine biology. Both are really awesome jobs. I've kind of started out more freshwater and now have, you know, now working more in marine systems. Forestry and forester, you know, that's a super important job and it's you know managing our forests fish and wildlife biologists so that's somebody who really focuses it sounds like something what joanne maybe is studying studying to be so um you know a lot of our uh the people that are kind of the boots on the ground for protecting these animals and plants that we all love and really care about are you know fish and wildlife biologists field geologists if you love rocks and minerals and stuff right you know studying studying geology, that's actually, when I was doing the cave surveys, that's a type of field geology, right? Because you're studying, um, you know, how caves form and how water moves through the earth and all that. And then uh, restoration habitat biologist. So that's somebody who works on restoring habitat for, you know, like, let's say a wetland gets degraded, right? And it's like, wow, this wetland is really important. It was important habitat for some important species, or just, you know, we want to reclaim it from some kind of ecological damage that's happened that's gonna that's a that's a tall order right that's gonna take really smart people to figure out you know what the best way is to do that what kind of plants need to be planted there how to make the water right again you know how to keep the invasive species out all that kind of stuff so that's actually a whole field is restoration biology that's really um taking off that's kind of an emerging field that's really really taking off um and there are whole college programs now that are studying that. Invasive species biologists. So that's one that is, you know, invasive species are, you know, massive in economic impact, ecological impact. Um, you know, here on Kauai, you know, pretty much everything you see on the land is an invasive species, unless you go, you know, high up into the mountains, right? So you know, it's really, you can, it's affected our island a lot. In the ocean, we have fewer, but we do have some really um, 
impactful invasive species, you know, certain fish um, that really do play, a, you know, that do have an impact, a, a harmful impact. So trying to limit the effects of those, eliminate them, all that kind of stuff. Um, coral reef ecologists. So that's obviously, you know, pretty self-explanatory, studying coral reefs, protecting coral reefs. The lady who had my job before me, she actually left this job to go to American Samoa to be the coral reef ecologist for the um, marine, the marine sanctuary in American Samoa. So pretty awesome job. So she's down there studying and managing the coral reef down there. Um, hydrologist. So that's somebody who studies water. Super important. Um, friend of mine here on Kauai, Matt Rosner. He's a hydrologist and he studies. He helps um, a lot of different people here on Kauai, like farmers, right? So the if you're farming kalo, you need water, right? And you need to understand how to be able to get that water sustainably from streams and use that water sustainably. Um, he's really been instrumental in helping certain groups um, actually bring like lawsuits to against the state or against other management agencies to say like, hey, you need to like distribute this water more equitably and make sure that the small farmers are getting their fair share, not just the big, you know, legacy water holders like the plantations and stuff. So, you know, that's a really important job, right? It's not just about the water, it's about the community and the people. Um, rangeland ecologist, so that's something too, like if you're in, like interested in like ranching and farming, you know, that's really, really important to understand healthy, um, you know, how to, how to raise healthy uh, livestock on a field in fields. That's something on Kauai here. You know, the grasses that we have are not terribly nutritious. So they have to ship the cattle to the mainland, but they're actually trying to bring, they're trying to change that. They're trying to change the fields and the grasses and plant more alfalfa and other protein rich grasses to make more healthy cattle. So they're not having to do that. So that's lowering the carbon footprint of, you know, that, um, that, that industry. So that, that, that's, you know, the, a lot of these things, they're very, you have your hands in a lot of different things. Very varied is the key. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay. Why it's awesome. You get to work outside in beautiful places. It's hands-on work. You know, you're the, whoop, sorry. You're the front line in the fight to protect the environment, you know, boots on the ground. You really get to work closely with the community. Almost all of these you know, jobs, it's like you're doing things that matter to people, right? So you're very much interfacing with the community in, in a lot of these situations and that can be very rewarding. It can be challenging, right? Um, but it can be very rewarding. And so, you know, it wasn't just about, I was like, like I said, it wasn't just about my formal schooling, but you know, I, I did a lot of other things. I didn't go straight into college after I graduated high school. I worked at a cabinet shop, right? I learned carpentry and woodworking. Um, you know, I grew up fishing. Here's a photo of me <laughs> as a kid right there. I was fishing with my grandpa in South Carolina. We would go out there every summer and spend it with my cousin and my grandpa and we'd go fishing all the time off his boat. He was a retired commercial fisher. So he, he knew his stuff. Um, and then my dad has a business, an auto business here in Kauai. So I learned, you know, um, auto repair and maintenance. I learned, you know, communication skills and team leadership working in food service and student organizations and community orgs. Um, and then I learned about, you know, forestry from that internship that I did with Hawaii uh, Koke Resource Conservation Program. So all of these things actually um, are really important to what I do today, even though they're very different, because you know, your skill set is going to be, especially when you're doing something in a job that's very varied, the bigger your toolbox of skills, the more effective you're going to be, right? Like there were other people who applied for my job that I have right now, who maybe had more education, they maybe had more experience in certain other areas, but I was the only applicant that really knew how to fish. And that was super important for this job. So by putting that on my resume and being able to talk competently about that at my interview, it's how I landed this job, right? That was the thing that set me apart. Um, so, you know, practical skills, right? Like 
scuba diving, <laughs> you know, that's can be a fun recreation, but it could really give you a leg up if you already know how to dive, if you're doing these kind of careers. Carpentry, metalworking, mechanical, we're always having to fix our boat, right? We have a boat and we can't always like get somebody shop to come out and work on it. We got to fix it ourselves if something breaks a lot of times. So it's a good thing that me and our other, you know, biologists know how to do that stuff. Know how to drive off road, four wheel drive, you know, know how to drive a boat, be safe in the water. Um, you know, technical skills and knowledge. This is stuff that you're going to be learning more in formal education, but also it's a lifelong thing, right? You're always going to be growing in this of like scientific thinking, not just thinking about, you know, when we are doing work, sometimes I have to think like a fisher, like, but sometimes I have to think like a, a reef ecologist, right? Those are two very different mindsets, thinking about, you know, where the fish are and what's kind of my goal out here today, right? So, um, and then expertise, like, you know, you got to know your stuff, right? You got to, you got to learn the species, you got to learn the words, you got to learn the concepts and be able to apply them. You got to be an expert, right? Somebody that people want to come to, to be relied on for information about whatever it is, right? It doesn't mean it'd be a know-it-all, right? It just means being competent in, in your area of, of study. And um, computer skills, incredibly important, right? Being able to program, being able to, um, you know, really just even just use a computer really effectively and understand, you know, how to do that is critical in science. Writing and communication, super important. Uh, you learn that in school, but, you know, you learn a lot more outside of school on that. Um, really how to communicate and, you know, be effective in that. Physical fitness, obviously, this is a physical job, right? So you got to be competent in swimming, hiking, climbing, endurance and strength, right? Like it's, that's actually really important. Um, you know, if you got to go when, like those, when we were working in Sequoia, Kings Canyon, I mean, we were carrying 60 pound backpacks of equipment, you know, and we do like 14 miles in a day, 15 miles in a day, thousands of feet of elevation. It's hard work, you know, um, when we're the job we're doing now, you know, we're out in the water, we'll, we'll be scuba diving and doing like, you know, six or eight, six, you know, five or six dives in a day, which is a lot, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot of physical effort. Um, and just comfort in different conditions, you know, it's like we're out there and if the wind comes up and the waves are crashing and, you know, obviously we're safety first and everything, but, you know, sometimes it can, you know, just the more you can be comfortable in the different environments, right? Um, you know, hot, cold, wet, dry, <laughs> right? The more you comfort you can be, the better, the, you know, the more, the more that's a skill set. And then people skills are super important. You know, being able to communicate effectively, being able to be a, a team player is so important. You know, this is not a field that does that people who are like, you know, kind of like jerks and, you know, me, me, me kind of people do very well in. Um, and leadership is really important. You know, knowing when you know something and it's time to take charge, knowing when, when that is, right? And being able to do it. To whether that's to keep your team safe, um, to get the you know get the job done, or to just figure out you know how to make good decisions, and then the ability to educate and teach, even if you don't go into um, uh, you know formal education, you're going to constantly be you're going to constantly be interacting with the public, you know, in interacting with other people. You got to you're going to have team members underneath you. You're going to have to train, right? And the better of an educator you are, the better team is going to be working with you, right? So all those things, these are just skill sets, right? And you can learn these things in all kinds of different situations. But, you know, it's being a good scientist, especially, and I'm talking as a field scientist, because that's what I am. This is not, a, you know, not, I'm, I'm not saying you don't need these things for other, you know, other types of science work at all. That's not, you definitely need a lot of these things, right? Um, you know, scuba diving might be less important to say particle physics, right? But, <laughs> um, but you know, these things are important, right? It's not just about things you learn in your classes. But um, education is really important. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. But actually, I'll go ahead and talk about that now. Um, so formal education is really important. And I would, you know, if you're, this is something that you're, you're interested in, you know, pursuing college is really, really important. And I think, 
it can be a challenging thing to figure out, well, how do I, I don't, I don't know. I want to work outside. I want to work with my hands. If I want to do science, I don't really know what I want to study. Um, so, you know, a couple of tips that I have is, and I work actually here with an organization called The Bridge, which helps um, high school students here on Kauai um, apply to college. And I, when I worked for a Texas State University, I worked in the admissions department, or I was like a kind of a, a mentoring program. I worked with the mentoring program, new, the freshman mentoring there, uh, kind of as a little side thing. And, you know, so, I've, and what I, this is, so this is knowledge that I've kind of, tips that I've kind of gleaned is important. is like following your passions and interests, right? And really thinking about what are the things that you love to learn about? That's really important, right? Like, what do you, what is it that like, when you're like scrolling through, I don't know, your phone or something, like what are the things that make you stop and be like, oh, that's really cool. Like, I, I wonder more about that. Like, and I'm gonna go to Wikipedia and like look that up and like, oh, that's really cool. And like go down the rabbit hole, right? Like what kind of things really like grab your attention? Um, what do you care about? What do you care about protecting and preserving? You know, that's, that was for me, that was a big thing was like, a motivation to study science is I saw in play, different places that I lived the changes that were happening in the world and how like development and human impact like kind of ruined some of these awesome places that I used to love to like fish and hang out in and stuff and it just like wrecked them you know so I saw like how our what we do as humans like really can be really negative for the environment and I, that awoke, awoke in this kind of like passion to protect and you know care for the environment and then what kind of environments do you like to spend time in and what, what by that I mean like are you like a water person like are you a waterman like you want to be on the water do you want to be near the water or are you like I want to be in the mountains and the cold fresh air you know um, what thinking about those kinds of things can really help you narrow down maybe what kind of things you want to study like and where you'd want to go to college, right? So choosing a college, I think, for field science, if you're interested in that, is finding schools with a hands-on opportunities. Because studying just like a, getting a degree in biology, that's not necessarily going to prepare you for a field science career, right? That's going to prepare you maybe for um, a career in medical school or to go on to grad school or, you know, different cellular, you know, different biology, you know, biology related things. But a more effective program is going to be something that's more hands-on and applied, right? And so jobs that offer work uh, departments and not even with, not even just thinking about schools, but like within a school, this school may not be like the most famous school in the world, but they have an incredible aquatic biology program, top tier, right? Maybe they're physics or whatever is not that great <laughs> you know but they have this incredible you know certain and that's a lot of times the way it is is you know you want to think more about the specific programs and their quality rather than the overall quality of the school the overall quality of the school matters but what's really important is that you know are you going to get the training that you need to pursue your dreams and career right work study, internships, student researcher, those kind of opportunities are really, really important. And that's one thing that at the university I went to, Texas State University. So two, I went to two schools, I went to Texas A&M and I went to Texas State. Texas A&M, massive school, right? Huge, it's like almost 60,000 students. I think it is over 60,000 students now. Massive, I was in classes like 400 people. I did not get those things. And as a result, when I got out of college, I had a really hard time finding a job. It was also the recession, which didn't help. Um, but after I, but then when I saw it, when I went to Texas State University, it was a smaller school, not as well known, but they gave their students excellent training. You got to, they were, you were in small classes of, you know, 20 to 30 people. You were getting internships, you were doing work study, you were shadowing grad students, you know, out in the field. And those guys, they're getting jobs right out of college, you know, and it, it, it made a difference, you know, getting the, that hands-on experience, getting skills. Um, and if you're like, man, I don't even know where to start. And this is especially useful for grad school, because I think, you know, grad school is important for if you really want to pursue higher level jobs and, you know, get paid more. <laughs> 
it is, you know, getting a master's degree is generally a good idea, but finding, um, and this is applicable to anything, right? This is not just field science, but if you're like, look up something you're really interested in, Kauai coral reefs, right? Go to Google Scholar. And here, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so let me just demonstrate this. Okay, so scholar.google.com, right? Let's look at this, Kauai coral reefs. I wanna study coral reefs on Kauai. That's what I wanna do. Okay, I'm just looking, I'm not looking at the, the titles, I'm looking at the authors. Okay, let's see, I'm seeing this person. Let's see, I'm seeing KL Me a few times. Oh, I'm seeing her quite a bit. Let's click on her name or her, his name, whoever it is. KL, okay, is a sheep. Yeah. So I actually knew, I know who this is, so that's why. <laughs> um, and look at this. Oh, wow, these are really interesting research. This sounds like something I might be kind of interested in maybe studying. Where is she at? American University. Oh, might be a good place to do some studying, right? That's in Washington, D.C. Um, let's see, what's another name I'm seeing here? Um, look, you know, Alan Friedlander. Oh, University of Hawaii, close to home, right? Look at all the studies that he's done. You know, okay, I want to study at his university, right? In his department. You might take classes with this guy, right? So don't think of college as like, uh, it's just this generic thing. Think of it as like, you're going to be learning from really smart people, right? You're going to college to learn from people that are super educated, right? And gifted teachers. So find people that you want to study under, you know, who can provide you that education that you're looking for. Um, I think that's, that is something that is not always thought about. Okay, and then, you know, different career paths. There's a lot of different things and I'm gonna wrap this up here really quick. So we have time for some questions, but you know, you could go academic um, and an academic career. This is like kind of an example career path for in the academic world. So that'd be like working at a university. So you could start out maybe as a technician, right? Working in a lab, working in as a field technician, then maybe a, become a staff biologist, then like a researcher, professor that would obviously researcher and professor you're probably going to need more of a phd at that point right it's going to require higher level schooling um and then if you with a lot of experience you could be like the director of like a major research program or institute right and that would be obviously like you know you would have to really be be on your on your game for that but that's kind of the you know highest level and then within government a lot of government work like so i work for the government and a lot of the entry level positions technicians right they're the boots on the ground. They're out there scuba diving every day, right? It's hard to get past technician without a master's degree. Um, so if you want to make more money and you know have a little bit more responsibility, getting that master's degree is going to be really important. A lot of people do technician work for a few years and then um, and then go back to school after they kind of like have some work experience. And then, you know, if you have more education that can give you that ability to be like a biologist, full biologist, a manager, or even an administrator, you know, higher level positions. And then um, not in the nonprofit sector. So, you know, there's a lot of like scientific and conservation nonprofits. So you could start again, technician, and then go to like project lead, researcher, director. It does, again, you're gonna need more education and more experience moving up through these fields. And there's a lot of community based. Like I'm more interested in like the human in, impact of like science, right? The human element. There's some, a lot of these that are really, really important jobs. Like, you know, you could start out as like an educator, right? Someone working in the community to like do kind of similar stuff to what I do, aquatic science education, right? And then, or maybe be a science advisor to a group like say like Surfrider, for example, right? They have advisors who are scientists that work for them that advise them on different, you know, all these different projects that they're doing and what the scientific impact and the scientific, you know, what kind of data do we need to collect here, right? How do we need to write this up? You know, community liaison. So somebody who's really working with the community, doing grant writing, do, working with the government, all that kind of stuff, right? And then traditional arts practitioners. So this is super important. I mean, here in Hawaii, 
you know, I think about different organizations and what some of the most critical people are those who are Hawaiians who know the traditions and know the, um, the practices and the, the, um, the wealth of knowledge that goes back centuries about these, this place and these animals and plants and the environment here. That's, that's so important, right? And these are people that are very highly valued in these organizations. Um, so anyway, that's kind of, you know, it's all in a day's work, it's fun, right? We, we, we work hard, we play hard. This is, these are both pictures I took at work. So <laughs> once looking at the seal kind of being jealous of him, but then sometimes, you know, I'm just waiting. That's that little orange buoy. That's the dive team. I'm driving the boat, just waiting for them to come up. <laughs> it was a beautiful day. So, um, yeah. So I'd love to open it up. I, you know, do you guys have any questions or thoughts or could be about stuff I talked about here? Could be about aquatic resources, you know, related stuff, anything. I can go first. Um, First of all, thank you for um, like sharing, but um, really cool career. And um, one of, I guess one of my first questions is, uh, so far, what has been the most challenging? Like it's just in your entire career in general. Yeah, what would be the most yeah. challenging? I would say, um, this is kind of a, 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 a the most challenging thing is for me personally, I think it's like the confidence to believe in myself that I can like learn this whole new thing. Right. And like, cause I can cut, you know, with being someone who's varied and doing a Jack of all trades, kind of the other side of that coin is that you're a master of none. Right. You can't, you can't, you know, like, you kind of have to think about that right and reckon be it come to terms with that and it's like for me what that means is being a lifelong learner um and so for example like you know i grew up fishing on the east coast that style right fishing off a boat is very similar to a lot of the fishing that's done here but there's a lot of big differences right and in the culture and everything and i did some fishing here but most of the fishing that I did was not here, you know, growing up and stuff. And so then coming into this place and be like, okay, now you're supposed to do fishing education, right? And here I am like talking to people, you know, like I'll do these like Ohana fishing days and there's like, you know, some uncles that like know more, they've forgotten more about fishing than I ever know, right? And here I am like talking about fishing, right? And it's like, trying to be humble and recognize that but then also like having the confidence to be like well I do know some like I can share what I know right and I can learn and I can adapt to new situations and you know do that and I think that's that's the biggest challenge you know is like finding ways to you know to adapt and pivot yourself because the, the job market the reality is like you never know what's going to come available right and you never know what your life may you know, kind of like come at you and you have to be adaptable. You may have like this whole career that you have like lined up and then life might just go, right? And so having the confidence to like be able to, like, I can adapt to this, but also like, I'm going to pursue what I want to pursue, right? And and not get like thrown off too much, you know, by by life's curves. I think that's the biggest, the biggest challenge. And it, it, a little bit less like high-minded, right like that's kind of like the overall high-minded thing I think um yeah I think here this switching from uh, freshwater biology primarily to studying marine biology was a huge challenge I had to do a lot of reading and catching up I mean I literally like ordered a bunch of textbooks off eBay and just started you know just because like well, all right I'm doing marine biology now you know <laughs> <laughs> reading papers, listening to people, talking to people, not opening my mouth until I, you know, kind of feel like I have something important, you know, something good to say, right? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Did you have anyone I wanted to study under? Yes, actually. Um, 
so where I kind of that that realization came to me was actually when I was looking for grad school because I realized I had had this um, kind of lackluster uh, undergrad experience where I had taken all these classes and I did really well, but I didn't really feel like I had gained the skills needed to really like do a science job, you know, and just had all this knowledge around in my head. And, um, and so when I was applying for grad school, I really started like looking at, you know, these different professors and I found this guy, Ben Schwartz, and he was like, literally, um, Dr. Ben Schwartz. And he was like rappelling down a cave in his, like on his photo on like the university website. I was like, Oh, that guy looks cool. <laughs> or something. I said, Hey, I'm considering applying to the university. I'd love to meet you. And, you know, are you accepting any students? for your master's program and he was like yeah um come on by and you know he introduced me he's like I'm not accepting anyone this semester I'm all full but let me introduce you to this other guy and who I work really closely with and so I ended up being co-advised by both of them brilliant scientists I mean just absolutely incredible scientists and learned so much from them and I think about some other students who I know who just kind of like oh this guy's the limnologist I want to study lake science so I'm going to just be under him and they had a terrible experience because he is not somebody who like developed them you know and invested in their career so even though they were at the same program as me they had a very different outcome you know and so it's really important to find someone who's going to invest in you and give you the training that you need I mean obviously you have to put something into it too right but that mentorship is a two-way street so yeah, Dr. Ben Schwartz, he's awesome. If you ever want to like study caves, he's a guy. <laughs> he is, he's like, he's actually, in, I didn't even know this at the time, but he's actually one of the nation's leading experts on like cave and especially like aquifer animals, like all those little blind animals and stuff. Like he's, yeah. Ask you a question, Aaron. If, I yeah. mean, you've done so much amazing stuff. It's just so cool. It's uh if it, would it, would there be something you would change? Anything you would do have done differently? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think I think I would have um, probably tried to go to. I think I would have. I wish I had a little bit more help when I was applying for college. Um, I didn't really think about myself even really going to college for a while. I didn't. I actually didn't start. I was twenty or twenty one before I actually started college. Um, and I was just working, I was just cruising, surfing, whatever, you know, and, um, I, I wish that like, I had had a little bit more, it was good, I think, to have that gap, but on the other hand, trying to then apply for college and like, get back into that world was really challenging. And I ended up going to the first school that accepted me instead of like, casting a wider net and really like trying to find a place that fit with what I wanted to study. And, you know, it was good. It was, a, I mean, it's a good school. It's a well-known school and I have made a lot of great friends, lifelong friends. So, you know, wouldn't want to, you know, a lot, I, 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 it's hard to say like, oh, I wish that had never happened. But I think like, you know, I could have had a more effective undergraduate program and then come out actually you know, instead of having like three years after I graduated from college of really struggling to find good work, um, I think I could have come out and been had more success right out of college if I had, you know, understood more of that. So that's definitely something, you know, that I would have done differently, I think, is, is my undergrad situation. To do the next step, it's about fulfilling yourself and your interests. And of this time is like almost like wasted time like oh I was just like just bumming and everything and then like I was like then you know I was working at a coffee shop and I was like built working in a cabinet shop and I was just doing all this different stuff and it's like it wasn't until as I've gone along further in my career I realized how super important all of that is to my to my life you know and so I think like for high school students you know, what I just encourage, my encouragement is just like, you know, you are who you are and what you have experienced and the things that you know, and you've skilled, like you can bring those things to whatever career you're going to, like, if you're not, you know, you're going into computer science, it's like, okay, but you have your specific background growing up here on Kauai, learning, knowing the things that you know, those things are valuable, you know, and like, 
not thinking of it as like, oh, I, you know, I can't wait to like really for real learn all this stuff. It's like, I, I probably use, I mean, my formal education was really, really important, but I use my, the stuff I learned just in life as much or more in my job, you know? So, you know, giving your, making sure that you're, you're just out there, like, you know, thinking of your experiences as valuable and, you know, trying to get as much as you can out of them and learning as many different things as you can. It's, it's never going to be a bad thing. Right. And taking time to like figure out, cause I'm kind of glad that I didn't go right into college in some ways, because I was actually like, my original plan was to study history and history is awesome. But I'm really glad that I did not follow my original <laughs> love history. It's great. History is resigned to my bookshelf now, though. So, but I love to read about history. You know, <laughs> that's yeah. it's a, you know, it took it took me some time to really figure out. Like, no, yeah, actually, I think I could do science. Like, I think that's really what I'm more interested in. You know, I cannot thank you enough. This was just such a rich discussion, and you had so much great advice. And thank well, you thank so you for much. having me, uh, Jovaline and Asher and Joanne. Much luck to you on your studies. You know. I'm always down to just like talk story. Um, and like I said, I do actually work with a program called The Bridge, helping people apply for college. So if that's something that you're interested in, are you guys are needing help with your college apps? Um, or you're like, man, I'm just not sure where to start or like picking a college and stuff. Really recommend just at the very least checking out this website. It's amazing. This whole website is tailored to Kauai students. So it's like, Whereas there are places that are like provide like full ride scholarships, right? And there's place that a lot of students from Kauai have gotten into because they want more like geographic diversity. They want people from the 50th state, right? So um, definitely check that website out. They've got great resources for like essay writing, college admissions, financial aid. It's awesome. And and reach out if you if you need any help or just want to talk story or anything i'm always i'm always down for that 